To begin a discussion of the nervous system, the first thing we need to talk about are the functions of the nervous system. Most importantly, the nervous system will receive information in the form of stimuli about what is happening inside and outside the body and then send information in response to those stimuli. It will also act as a control center for all the body's responses and functions that might have to do with all that information that's coming in and going out. Remember that the nervous system receives and sends information back and forth constantly. And then it acts as a control center for all the body's responses to that information. What is a stimulus? A stimulus is any change or signal that causes a reaction. What are our examples of a stimulus? A ringing telephone is a stimulus. Hunger is a stimulus to you to go find food. Cold temperatures are a stimulus to make you put on warmer clothes. What is an internal stimulus? An internal stimulus comes from inside your body. And examples of internal stimuli would include low blood sugar, being too hot, being too hungry. These are stimuli that come from within you, so we call them internal stimuli. So what about an external stimulus? An external stimulus is something that comes from outside your body, the environment around you. Yay! Examples of external stimuli would be the smell of something around you, okay, uh, the heat on a hot summer day, or cold weather. Those are external stimuli. What is a response? A response is a reaction to a stimulus. For example, if you shiver because you're cold, or you're sweating because you're hot, or eating because you're hungry, or ducking because you're moving away from something dangerous, these responses are also considered negative feedback, which we'll look at on the next slide and the next page. All right, so now let's talk about negative feedback. This is a response in the opposite direction of a stimulus. Your negative feedback system is what helps you maintain homeostasis, which is keeping things in balance. On the next slide, we'll look at how the negative feedback system works. The negative feedback system uses stimulus and response to accomplish its tasks. So for example, if the body senses very cold temperatures, that's going to be a stimulus to the body to change from the set point, from normal. So the change will be detected and the skin and nervous system will send a message to the brain. The brain will go, ah, something needs to happen here. It will initiate a corrective mechanism, okay? And in the case of very cold temperatures, that would be shivering, okay? That would be the response. Then the shivering is going to go on for a while, and eventually the body's temperature will normalize, and that's going to be where conditions are returning to the set point. When that happens, then the body goes, okay, so things have worked, homeostasis has been restored, so let's switch off these corrective mechanisms, and so the body will stop shivering, and everything will have been resumed. Homeostasis will have been restored. All right, let's check your understanding, your memory. What do you call any change or signal that causes a reaction? Is it a stimulus, a response, or a reflex?
All right, let's check your understanding again. What is the reaction to a stimulus called? Is it a reflex, a response, or an action? All right, so now let's move on to the structures of the nervous system. What are the primary structures of the nervous system? We have the brain, which is, of course, up in our skull. We have the spinal cord, which runs from our brain down through the center of our back. And then we have the neurons, also known as the nerves. Those are the nerves of the nervous system. Those are the three primary structures, brain, spinal cord, neurons. So we've established that the structures of the nervous system, there are three. There's the brain, the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system neurons. Okay. Now, those three structures are broken down into two sections. Okay. The first section is the central nervous system, which is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. All right. That's your central nervous system. The other part of it is the peripheral nervous system. Okay, the peripheral nervous system contains all the nerves, uh, the neurons throughout the rest of the body that are not specifically the brain and the spinal cord. All right, let's check your understanding of what we've just gone over. What are the two parts of the central nervous system called? Is it the brain and spinal cord? Or is it sensory and motor? So let's talk about the brain. What exactly does the brain do? Well, the brain controls most functions of your body. It's also the location of all the higher order thinking your thoughts, your feelings, your ideas, all the abstract information that you process through your mind, that is your brain. Okay, now let's talk about what the spinal cord does. First of all, it is the link, the physical link between the neurons, the nerves of the peripheral nervous system, and your brain. So it's like the picture you see there in the middle. It is the link between the whole body, all of the nerves that run throughout the whole body, and the brain. It's the conduit into which all of the nerves feed and then get fed up into the brain. Um, the second thing that the spinal cord does is it controls your reflexes. Uh, the little diagram to the right there shows a finger being poked with a needle the signal running into the spinal cord and then very quickly back out to the finger uh, as the, the muscles of the finger pull it away from the needle. And that is uh, an example of how a reflex functions. The pain signal is still sent to the, uh, to the brain, but the reflex, by the time the signal gets to the brain, the reflex has already happened and the body part has reacted quickly. And that's how reflexes work is via the spinal cord. What are neurons? Neurons are the cells that carry information throughout your nervous system. The job of the peripheral nervous system nerves is to connect the central nervous system to all the other organs of the body. In other words, your eyes and your ears and your muscles and the blood vessels have to be connected to the central nervous system in some way so that that information can travel. And so that's the job of the neurons. They connect the central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, to everything else in your body. All right, time for some nervous system fun facts. Your brain has 100 billion neurons. The right side of your brain controls the left side of your body, and vice versa, which means... Uh, the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. The total surface area, and if you don't get that, go talk to your math teacher. 
The total surface area of the human brain is about 25,000 square centimeters. All right? You can see what a centimeter is by looking at a metric ruler. A centimeter is very, very tiny. So 25,000 square centimeters is the total surface area of the brain. If we lined up all the neurons in your body, it would be about 965 kilometers long. That's 600 miles. Long way. All right, let's check that brain. Let's check that understanding. Make sure you're keeping up here. The automatic response that occurs very rapidly and without conscious control is called a response, B, a reflex, or C, a stimulus. All right, so how does the nervous system keep the body working? In other words, how does it help maintain homeostasis? First of all, it collects information about the amounts of energy and nutrients inside the body. Second, it collects information about dangers outside the body. And then third, it sends messages throughout the body about how to fix problems before they get too big. The brain coordinates all the other body systems responses and interactions. So when you reach for a phone that's been ringing, your brain has coordinated with the muscular system and this, this coordination involves a response to the stimulus of the phone ringing. The response is your muscular movement to reach for the phone. So what we now know is that movement and control of the body, this all requires that the nervous system and skeletal system and muscular systems all work together at the same time. They have to all be interacting and talking with each other through these chemical signals, these nervous impulses. So let's look at a situation like if you stub your toe, you bang it into some desk or chair or your backpack that's got bricks in it. So the nervous system depends on the neurons in your skin to sense the outside world, right? That's how your nervous system knows what's going on. If you stub your toe, the nerve cells in the foot will send signals up the leg through the spinal cord and into the brain. Now, if the pain is significant enough, your spinal cord will cause a reflex action to, to interrupt and make you move quicker. But the nerve cells in the brain will sense these signals as pain. Here's a flow map of the stimulus response to pain. Okay, first of all, if your hand touches a hot plate, then a signal is going to be sent from the hand nerves to communicate that pain to the brain. Then the brain is going to sense an imbalance in the force, no, I mean an imbalance in homeostasis, and it's going to communicate to the hand muscles to move the hand away from the burner. So the hand muscles are going to go, okay, we're going to take this on now. So they're going to move away from the hot plate. Okay. When that happens, then homeostasis is going to be restored, okay? And so normalcy or homeostasis comes back.